Good evening. You're watching the news on Croatian television. Several hundred people gathered in Jakovo today to celebrate the 27th anniversary of the founding of the 3rd Guards Brigade of the Croatian Armed Forces. The brigade gained fame and recognition for being the first to enter enemy-occupied territory at the outset of Operation Flash on May 1, 1995. Operating mainly in Slavonia, 363 members lost their lives while 16 are still listed as missing in action. Wreaths were laid and candles lit at the monument to the fallen defenders from the homeland war. Today here in Jakovo, I would like to once again congratulate the members of the 3rd Guards Brigade on their special day. I would also like to thank them for their role in the freedom of Croatia and the peace we enjoy today. And I would like to give special recognition to the families of those who lost their lives and those who are still listed as missing. The members of the 3rd Guards Brigade fought from the Far East to the Far South. The entire 4th Battalion of the 3rd Guards Brigade went missing in Vukovar. We fought on all the battlefields, from the smallest of skirmishes to Operation Flash and Operation Storm. After seven years on the political scene, Zid held their first party congress this afternoon in Zagreb. Around 2,000 members and supporters packed the Lisinski Concert Hall to hear party president Ivan Vilibor Sinčić present his latest program titled a Croatia with equal opportunities for everyone. According to opinion polls, Zid is currently the third most popular party behind only the HDZ and SDP. I plan on continuing to do my job till the very end, and I expect each one of you here today to give your support and expertise across all levels of society so that we may finally bring some changes to Croatia and create the country we want to see. Every day we grow stronger and stronger. All of you here today have succeeded in proving the skeptics wrong. Meanwhile, the country's largest opposition party, the SDP, commemorated the 11th anniversary of the death of their first president, Ivica Račan. Some 300 party members from across the country gathered at Zagreb's Mirgoj Cemetery to pay their respects to the man they say embodied the principles of the Social Democratic Party. Rachan taught us that in life and in politics the most important thing is to keep your honor. As a social democrat we keep saying that we want a Croatia for everyone and not just for the privileged few. This is part of the dream that Ivica Rachan lived and strived for. The city of Split has made huge strides over the past few years in attracting more tourists. Thanks in part to increased investments in marketing and promotions, as well as recent summer-like temperatures, the tourism season has begun much earlier than usual. Visitors from around Europe and beyond have already filled the streets of the Dalmatian capital. Uh, we've heard a lot about this country. Uh, it's very popular now, so we decided we wanted to come and spend my birthday and my sister's birthday and everybody's birthday when the weather got a bit better. So we brought my mom, who's 84 years old. Very nice, you know, very nice. First time I see, you know, very nice. Some people say it's a beautiful country, it's cheaper than France, and it's the weather is nice. Yeah, the weather, yeah, yeah, it's, it's amazing because in Zagreb it was kind of raining sometime here, just the sun and the sea, so we enjoy it. In more tourism news, the Zermania Adventures Festival wrapped up today around the southern slopes of Mount Velebit. The festival aims to promote the natural beauty of the region through river rafting, paddle boarding and trail running. Organizers say the event has huge potential in attracting more people to Croatia from the lucrative extreme sports market. This is really great. The whole town is taking part. I think this will become a great tourist attraction for this area and the people who live here. Taking a quick look at sports, in the 32nd round of play in the Croatian Football League, Hajduk and Slaven Belupo played to a scoreless draw in Koprivnica. Meanwhile, Rudesh beat Cibalia 3-2 in stunning fashion earlier today in Zagreb. With the score tied at 1-1 after 90 minutes, Three goals came in quick succession in stoppage time, two by Rudesh and one by Tsibalia. Samir Fazil scored a hat-trick for the home team to give Rudesh the win. The Croatian Tennis Federation has been given until the 20th of May to decide on where to hold the Davis Cup semi-final matchup versus the United States. 
Croatia was given an extension from the original April 30th deadline by the International Tennis Federation. Croatia faces the USA from the 14th to the 16th of September for a spot in the finals. The weather forecast for tomorrow calls for mostly sunny skies but with more unstable weather all around. Increased cloud cover in places could bring rain and thunderstorms, especially in continental regions. A moderate to strong southwesterly wind will blow in the interior. The Adriatic coast can expect a weak to moderate southeasterly and southwesterly wind, while a northwesterly will move in during the afternoon along areas of the northern and central coast. Morning lows of 10 to 15 degrees in the interior and from 15 to 20 on the coast will give way to highs of 22 to 27 degrees Celsius and up to 29 in areas of the Far East. Sunny and warm weather is expected on Tuesday and Wednesday, but again not very stable. More cloud cover in higher elevations will increase the chance of isolated showers. Thursday looks to be changeable with rain and thunderstorms in the forecast. The Adriatic coast, on the other hand, will be sunny until Thursday, as rain and thunderstorms are expected by the end of the week. And that brings us to the end of our program. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow night.